Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to change the wheel bearings in your Fulcrum Racing 6 C17 front rim brake wheel. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. So here we have the front wheel. So the first thing we need to do is get a 13mm cone spanner just to go in behind the nut like that. So you hold that in there in place and then you get yourself a 17mm either a socket or a ring spanner to go on the end so you just put that on there and then holding the cone spanner and just do undo this anti-clockwise like that just crack the nut undone like that and you can just wind off the nut on the end put that to one side so there's the nut And then we've got a piece in there, as you can see. Now, what you want to do next is the plastic ring around the edge here. Just need to get that off so you can carefully go around and unclip that. Just be careful not to break the plastic ring itself so it can go brittle over time. So just unclip that. And then you can see the flat in there, the piece there where you had your spanner over on the end there. So just undo that. If you can't undo it by hand, just hold this side and you, sh you might be able to undo it. If you can't, then just get your spanner on there like that and just hold it on the other side with your ratchet or your spanner on that side, your 17mm on the other side and then just crack it undone. Just get it moving and then you should be able to wind it off because it goes through into the middle of the bearing so you should just be able to get it started then you should just be able to undo it by hand so we just unwind that out of the middle I'll say it's the black piece on the end here and then it goes into a silver bit that goes through the middle of your bearing so you just undo that So sometimes you undo it and the washer will come off with it. This washer, the silver piece, that's what that looks like there. But then you've got this washer here. Now sometimes that comes off like that and sometimes it'll just remain sat in there. So it doesn't matter if it's still sat there for the minute. Sometimes, like I say, it'll just sit there like that. So it doesn't matter. If yours comes off, then you can take it out. And then once you've done that, and just go around to the other side. Just in case of getting your spanner again. Put that on the flat. Again with your 17mm. Just undo it again anti-clockwise. Just crack the nut undone. Undo the take the nut off the end. Again. Then on this side, if you hold on to the axle on the other side what you just removed then you should be able to undo that if not then just use your spanner on it again holding this side of your hand but you should be able to undo it like that you should move whilst you're undoing the axle so just hold hold it if it moves it moves and then I'm undoing the axle out of the other side so it's going back through So just threading the axle out of the middle, just unthread it all the way until you take it right out. So there's the actual axle itself. So put that to one side. Then same on this side again, if you just unclip the plastic cover again carefully. Like that. You can see that piece in there, so you should be able to get hold of it and pull it out of the bearing. Possibly with the with the washer attached, it might not be, it might stay in there, like I said earlier. If sometimes you'll get this piece here will be stuck in there and you'll go to get hold of it, you can't get it out like that. 
just trying to pull it out and it won't come out if that's the case then just leave it stuck in the bearing and then I'll move on to the next step and I'll just show you how to get it out just in case that happens to you and you can't get this out by pulling on it by hand and it's stuck in there but I'll show you that in a minute as you can see I've got a block of wood on the hard surface here if you've got a bench a good quality bench then put a block of wood on your bench just to protect the hub it won't get damaged if you're using a block of wood I'm just showing you like this so you don't need any special tools whatsoever to do this with now like I said earlier if you've got the piece like that stuck in the middle and that won't come out of the bearing you can't just get hold of it and pull it out what you need to do then is you can leave it in there if you can't get it out we'll get it out later on but what you do is turn that over like that and then put that down and get yourself another block of wood next to it same height so you can rest it like that because obviously that piece is sticking down out of the middle so therefore you need something to rest it on so it's going through the middle like that see so if you've got your washer in there just get your washer out to so this side as well and then what you do is to get that out the piece in the middle just put it down your punch like that so as it's resting on that bit in the middle so effectively in here down the bottom and then hitting down on that bit at a time crisscross pattern so you're hitting the bearing out straight don't hit it all on one side hit it one tap there move it across across like that so as you're not hitting out crooked and if you up you see the bearing started to come out you see that or not it's now flush with the edge like that that's still stuck in there so like I said doesn't matter if that's in there or not we can get that out afterwards or once it comes out like that eventually it will come out but the bearing might start to come out with it like you can see there as you're hitting this through hitting on here just tapping it round so you get to a point where the bearing might start coming out that's not a problem because like I said you want the bearing out anyway so once you've got that to one side you'll see that the bearing started to come out but now it's flush so if you put that on your block of wood now it's not going to be any good because it's not going to come out so what I'll do is I'll just show you how to get that out so as you can see the bearings now flush like I said with the end of the hub so putting on a block of wood there it's not going to hit that out so what I'll do is I'll just use a this happens to be a 27 millimeter socket you can use like a 28 if you've got one just put that on the block of wood like that I'll just put a cloth over the top of it just stop it damaging the hub or in any way just put that on there like that then we just sit that over there like that and then use your punch again and your hammer just put it down in the middle rest it on the bearing just give it a tap move it across give it a tap and you lift it up and there's your bearing there in the socket so I'll get that out so you have the bearing so all we do now is see it's just come out of that side there so now we lay the bearing the hub down on the block of wood and then now you can see the bearing in there just by looking down inside the hub so you can see it in there so you can hit it easy now so again we got it flush with the end so just put your socket back again put your cloth over it and rest that on there again like that And there you have the bearing from the opposite side. 
So now what you want to do is clean up all your parts, clean up your hub, inside your hub, clean all the old grease out from inside it, wipe that all round, and then we're ready to go ahead and install a couple of new bearings. So once you've got your hub cleaned up, the inside and your parts, you're ready to fit a couple of new bearings. Now what you want to do is on the inside the hub, you just put some grease around where the bearings are going to sit both sides. So just put a light coating of grease around both sides of the hub in the inside there. Brush that on like that. Then you can place your wheel down, doesn't matter which side. And then with the bearings, I'll put the uh, bearing size and numbers in the description below just in case you want to know what size they are to purchase a couple of new ones. So with the the bearings that come in the hub standard, they haven't got any seals on the opposite side. So they've only got a seal on the outside. So that's why they go bad over time, especially if you ride in the wet conditions, because the moisture gets in the back of the bearings. So if you purchase new ones, you can get them with a double seal, with a seal either side. So it helps keep all the moisture out. If yours haven't got that, then just make sure you've got some grease over the back of the bearing to protect the, the actual bearings in there before you go ahead and put them in. Put a good amount over the back of it to cover them. Just to help keep the moisture out. But say if you get ones with the seals on both sides and you haven't got a problem, you just put a light smear over the seal itself just to help. So once you've done that, just put a, a little coat around the actual bearing itself before we put it in. Like that. And then you can lower it in to place like that. So once you've got it dropped in there, what you can do is just push down on it with your hand. Just help just seat it in there. Like that. So it just keeps it seated in there straight. Before you go ahead and put it in, and then what you want to do is get this is a 21 millimeter socket. Either you can get a deep drive socket, or you can use a short one like that with an extension on it. Whichever you've got, you put that over there like that. It's the same size as the outside of the bearing, so you can just put it over there and just tap it. like that to get it started and then just carry on and tap that in making sure that it's going in nice and straight it's not going in crooked at all then you go ahead and hit that down in and obviously until it stops so we have the bearing installed as you can see so what we want to do then is put that side down on the block of wood and then repeat the same process with the opposite side bearing Again, if yours didn't have the the seal on there, on the bearing, make sure that you put some grease on the inside, and then see, put some grease around the outside again, like that. And then again, place it in the, the hub like that, and then push down on it just to help seat it in position and then again same thing again just using your socket and just go ahead hold it on the outside of it never hit where the seal is because you'll damage the bearing see before you put it in just run around like that just making sure that again this going in nice and Square, it's not going in crooked. And just carry on, tap that down in. So there's the opposite side one installed, that's both the bearings reinstalled, so we're ready to go ahead and reassemble the rest of it. So, when it comes to reinstalling the axle and everything else, what you want to do is just put some grease over the face of the bearing on either side.
like so and then with your your washer so what it's got is the concaved section in the middle that goes facing you and then the bump on the back goes towards the bearing just in case you're wondering which way they go around so what you can do is you can just get your, your section there goes through the middle or you put your cone spanner on you just put that through the middle like that what you want to do is then just put some grease on the inside the bearing like that and just around there just to help it stop it getting stuck in there at a later date and then what you do is put that in place in there like that to get that on there and then what you want to do is with your axle just put your axle through from the opposite side like that and then get it located in the middle of the bit you just put in and then start threading it on like that so what I'll we'll do is I'll turn it back around so you can see it so just hold this square there with your hand this bit and just thread that through and then what you want to do is you keep going through until you see you've got, the, you've got the piece on the end what's sitting in your frame effectively in your drop out and then if you just keep hold of it what you want to do is just keep threading it through until you see about three threads so you can count three threads there sticking through so when you can see three threads on the end here then that's far enough through because you've got to allow for the nut to go on there so then you've got your nut if you put that on see with this serrated edge on the outside and the flat part facing the hub just thread that on like that and just nip it up with your hand holding the axle this side just nip that on then you see the bit there where your dropout's going to sit has to be equal either side to make sure you're aware of that and you check that when you're putting it back together so that has to be equal so I'll, just, I'll show you that just quickly so I'll just take that nut back off because what you want to do is just put on your cover plastic cover on there first before you put the nut on because it won't go on with the nut on there just put that nut back on like that snip it up then you turn the wheel round again make sure you've got some grease over there and then again all we do is put the washer on like that I'll just put some grease over it where it's going to go through the middle of the bearing like that and we're just holding the opposite side just thread that in all the way making sure it's going through the middle of the bearing and the washer so we do that up until it stops obviously holding this side and do that up until it stops moving obviously if you over tighten that say if you put your socket on this side your 17 millimeter on and then you got your your cone spanner on there you was holding this side with your socket 
and you've done this up, what you do is the wheel wouldn't spin. So if you tighten that up, if you over tighten it, all I'll do is I'll put that on there. And then if I tighten that down, like that too tight, what happen is it'd be really tight, the wheel's not spinning. That's not spinning, that's just solid. Like that. It won't even turn. That's not that's not the wheel turn, that's just me letting it go. The axle's actually solid. So what you want to do is make sure that that's backed off enough so the wheel spins freely but not so much that obviously there'll be play in the axle or when it's on your bike you hold the wheel rim and move the wheel and then you can feel play in it you just got to back it off just enough so the wheel starts spinning nice and freely as it should because you don't want to overdo it because you'll ruin the bearings in no time and you don't want it too slack because obviously you'll have movement in your wheel so it's just a case of getting in the right place and once you've done that you can go ahead and put your cover back over again on the end just get them in the right place and just clip, clip it on like that then get your nut, serrated edge on the outside again, and then put that on, and then once you're happy with it, if you look at both sides, make sure again that the dropouts are both the same either side, where it's going to sit in your frame. That's critical to make sure they're the same. If not, then you have to take this back out again and then wind the axle through without this side on there, take that back out, all of that and then just hold the axle and just wind it back through whichever way that you need to go so as it's right so once you're happy with everything then just get your cone spanner again like that and then just nip up the lock nut on the end just hold the cone spanner and lock down that lock nut in place and just check on the other side make sure that's nipped up and again just check the wheel spins okay as it should like that and that's the installation complete the bearings so I hope you found the video helpful if you did remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content till next one ride safe and I'll see you then